Vartalam. Today uh, we are going to see about the demonstration of the spirometry. Uh, Detail of this uh, spirometry, we have taken information from the three lectures as well as we have collected information uh, from the briefing part of this uh, particular practical. Now, in the instrumentation, uh, in this spirometry, what we do is the recording of lung volumes and capacities, that is also called as spirogram. For that purpose, we are having with two instruments, one is this recording spirometer and uh, another one is this uh, simple spirometer. In the recording spirometer, we can record the static lung volume capacities like uh, tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume, vital capacity and the total lung capacity. While uh, in the dynamic lung capacities, we can record the time to the capacity, then uh, LVB that is the maximum uh, ventilatory volume and we can also calculate, uh, record the FU even. While that simple spirometer is recording the vital capacity, that's why it is also called as a vital graph. Now I request uh, Google sir to give uh, detailed information about these two instrumentations, then we will see about the recording of spirometer. Uh, instrumental part of this practical. Uh, this is recording spirometer. Uh, some parts of this recording spirometer are as these are gas valves here. With the help of these gas valves, we can exchange the gases this way. See, open the gas valve and you can exchange the gases inside this way. There is a drum which contains water. Then there is one more cap here. There is a water tap. With the help of this tap, uh, you can remove the water inside. Then this is the drum on which the papers are pasted like this. On the paper, we can record the graph like uh, FEV1, then maximum breathing capacity, and one more graph that is. Uh, vital capacity. So, there is a pen here which can record uh, the graphs. One more thing is there. Uh, there is assembly and uh, there is a gear system on this uh, which regulates the speed of the drum. In this case, if we put this arrow on N, that means it is in neutral and when the drum is in neutral, it can move easily. When we shift it to 17 seconds, that means there is one revolution of this drum in 17 seconds. We need different types of speeds for this uh, experiment. So, when we put on this 17 seconds, that means this drum rotates one revolution in 17 seconds. If we put it on 4 minutes, that means this drum revolves uh, the speed like this, one revolution in four minutes. Then the mouthpiece here, with the help of we respire. Then one more instrument is there. This is simple spirometer. With the help of this instrument, you can record the vital capacity. Then. Uh, <coughs> this tidal volume with the help of this disc which is with the help of this instrument that is simple spirometer you can record the tidal volume inspiratory reserve volume inspiratory reserve volume with the help of this disc see it is calibrated here if we put it on zero here arrow is on 0 and now you can record the tidal volume, uh, expiratory is the volume here. Uh, this graph, the 
written like this. This is a given where what we do is we record first normal respiration, then deep inspiration, holding your breath for a second, and then forceful expiration. Then, in case of the vital capacities, first some normal respirations, then deep inspiration and then again normal respiration, deep expiration, again one or two normal respiration, uh, then deep inspiration and expiration at a time. So this is vital capacity graph. Then one more graph with the help of this instrument you can record is maximum breathing capacity. What we do in this case, we record the normal respirations for one minute, then continued, continued by or uh, followed by this for uh, forceful and deep uh, respiration for 15 seconds. We record here it for 15 seconds and then convert it into one minute. So this was something about the instruments. Then I request in this to uh, proceed for the theoretical part. Hmm. Uh, as is, we have seen in the instrumentation uh, in theory part, how this particular work? We are having with uh, its assembly uh, with the combination of two cylinders, one is the upper cylinder and one another one is the uh, inner cylinder or inner drum. The outer cylinder is uh, filled with the water and the inner cylinder is uh, placed inverted and we are having with uh, the connection of metal tube or uh, metal tube and then it is uh, connected with the corrugated rubber tube and this metal tube is continued uh, toward the central portion of this uh, instrumentation that's why uh, whatsoever air that we inhale or exhale remains only in the inner drum diagrammatically uh, we, we, we have cleared this particular part and uh, whatsoever air, air remains in the uh, spirometer when we inhale at that time the air from this inner drum comes to our lungs and because of that it is creating vacuum and uh, this leads to downward shifting of the inner drum because of that as the drum is counterbalanced uh, by the weight and uh, that uh, through this counterbalance we are having with the marker pen that's why when we inhale at that time drum is going uh, down and the counterbalance with pen is coming up when we expire our uh, air uh, present in the lungs, it goes into the drum and because of that, it leads to upward shifting because of uh, increasing the pressure by uh, outflow of air in this drum and uh, it, this leads to downward moment of this uh, counterbalance and the marker again. So by this uh, basic mechanism, if we uh, see it's working, when I inspire, see what happens. And when I expire, see what happens. Then, as the pen is moving, because of that, on moving the, on this plate, On moving drum, it is the chimographic type of arrangement uh, in the recording spirometer where we get a record of uh, the respiratory activities where we record three types of drums, lung volumes and capacities, then uh, that is the static lung volumes and capacities, then we record MVD, then we record time vital capacity, then we record uh, the respiratory minute volume. So by this way, later on we uh, are able to calculate these all the things. FEV1 is also recorded from this uh, recording spirometer. Now we are going to see about the recording procedure uh, of this spirogram from this instrument. I have the progressors to show the recording from this instrument, how we can record this. Now, first, in first step, we are recording the normal static lung volumes and capacities. 
So first, we will be tidal only. Normal tidal respiration is get recorded, which is basically a point. The two lines on the paper, one line one can see, it is of 200 uh, ml. So total, if it is occupying the uh, two or uh, two and a half lines that indicate the uh, normal tidal respiration, then uh, deep inspiration and uh, that is the expiratory, uh, inspiratory reserve uh, volume is get recorded. Then again, normal tidal respiration. And then with forced expiration, expiratory reserve volume is get recorded. And then again, the tidal respiration. And then in one stroke, when we do about the uh, expiratory, uh, inspiratory reserve volume and expiratory reserve volume, then we are getting the uh, vital capacity. Like this, we can record the vital capacity graph. So this is the simple recording of the static lung volumes and capacities of, uh, from this recording spirometer. Uh, then, uh, here, we are going to record about uh, two dynamic uh, values. One is the uh, respiratory limit volume, which is uh, done with normal tidal respiration for one complete minute. So, number of respiratory cycles into tidal volume by that way, uh, one can calculate the uh, respiratory minute volume. And after recording of uh, respiratory minute volume for co one complete minute, uh, we record about the maximum ventilatory volume that is the MVV. MVV is attempted with max expiration and inspiration. Uh, whatsoever uh, max efforts person or subject can uh, do. And that is pos hardly possible up to 15 seconds like this. So this is the recording of MVV after respiratory minute volume and with this uh, full efforts person can do this recording only up to 15 seconds. After 15 seconds there is complete exhaustion of the person and this 15 second recording is used for cal further calculation of the dyspnea and the dyspnea mix. In the next step, we are having with the recording of uh, FUV1. FUV1 is, uh, is actually the uh, part of forced vital capacity, that is the FVC or the time to vital capacity. So, uh, in the forced vital capacity, we are attempting uh, for the expiration for complete 3 seconds and later on we are doing its fraction as uh, force expiratory volume at, at the end of first second, force expiratory volume at the end of second second and post expiratory volume at the end of third second that is the FUV1, FUV2 and FUV3. But what vital capacity is? Vital capacity is the max, uh, with max efforts, person is uh, expiring here after deep inspiration is called as vital capacity. And in the time to capacity or the force to capacity, the FV V1 part is most important, which is uh, showing uh, the aspect of normality. Or if obstructions are there, there is a uh, marketable re uh, reduction in the time to uh, this uh, FV V1. So, here uh, we are going to see about the recording of the FV V1. There we require the high, uh, high speed uh, moving drum where. We are completing uh, one rotation of drum in 13 seconds, so uh, we require a slight high speed for recording of this particular activity. So here it is the normal tidal respiration and after normal tidal respiration, this is the deep expiration, small pause and this is about the graph of a few one. In the few one, see normal tidal respiration and then we are having with uh, deep inspiration, then small pause and forced expiration. So this forced expiration is completing in 3 seconds. So this is one part, this is second part and this is third part like this.
so these are three three graphs which we have recorded. This particular graph is of uh, static lung volumes and capacities, and uh, these are the, the three uh, graphs which are of uh, dynamic lung volumes capacities. In the static lung volumes capacity, we are having with the tidal respiration, then uh, forced uh, uh, or ex uh, inspiratory reserve volume, then uh, again normal tidal respiration. This is the expiratory reserve volume, and uh, after a normal uh, tidal respiration. Vital capacity is recorded in that uh, after deep uh, inspiration, subject is uh, expiring from this point uh, forcefully up to this max uh, efforts of the expiration. So from this point to this point, this is the complete vital capacity. So this is the static lung volumes capacity. In the dynamic lung volumes capacities, we are having with these uh, three values. This, uh, this is the respiratory minute ventilation or respiratory minute volume where person is attempting for one complete minute with the tidal respiration and number of cycles into uh, 500 or 400 is done and we are getting the value of uh, respiratory minute volume. Then MAC MVV that is the maximum ventilatory volume or maximum breathing capacity is also recorded for 15 seconds. This is the second di uh, dynamic uh, uh, volume. And then this third is the FEV1 with normal tidal respiration. Now this respiration and uh, this tidal volume and this tidal volume, they are same. But this is on the slow speed and this is on the high speed. Now after normal tidal respiration, a subject is asked to uh, deep inspiration. After deep inspiration, we are asking subject to expire forcefully. Uh, and we are getting the forced expiratory volume or the time vital capacity from this point to this point. So these two things are matching here, but here time is not maintained, here time is maintained. Now here one can uh, uh, do fragments of the, F, uh, that is the forced vital capacity in FVV1, V2 and V3. So this is all about the uh, graphs of the lung volumes and capacity calculation part. Uh, is not possible here to demonstrate from this graph when we will join offline uh, to this uh, practicals we will see and understand the calculation part of this uh, spirometry recording okay thank you